Hello everybody, this is a Lighthouse Hall of Fame film from the North American server. Dark Ninja again in his T21. We're in Ford Standard Mode West Spawn. Not a big producer of Hall of Fame films, despite having a lot of cover and concealment that scouts can use. You, there's no one spot where you can just watch a whole big chunk of the map and get a lot of spots at one time. <clears throat> so there's a lot of concealment to use, but it's just for small chunks of damage and spotting damage as you go. Now, in this battle, that's going to hold true. Matter of fact, in this battle, he gets no assisted damage, but he gets a lot of regular damage. There's still a lot of mediums out in the battlefield because of the specials going on on the North American server for the, um, this part of the month. There's only two mediums and three heavies on the four heavies on the enemy team. One already one scout the rest are mediums and on his team three heavies one TD one already scout and the rest are mediums so lots of mediums there's probably gonna be a lot of action up north maybe not quite as big of a brawl down here in the bottom and a lot of tanks that are fairly mobile can move around the battlefield and adjust to what's going on so this should be an interesting fight probably won't be a typical Ford's battle A lot of mediums going north with one heavy along with them. Not very many people going south. Spies a easy eight to the north right away. There's much Lots down in the bowl there. Trying to climb up, he's going to move over into the middle. A lot of the mediums up here are coming across to fire down this way instead of looking to the north because they haven't seen anybody to the north at the moment. This is actually a good move on their part because they're going to squash these people right here. Now he's recognizing an opportunity to do something that you normally don't get on this map and that's sit out in the open here. Normally if you're out in this area firing north, the enemy has tanks right here that will just take you out really, really fast. But because of the way his northern force played it and cleaned out, cleaned out this pass, that lets him sit basically exposed and fire to the north using the trees and bushes in between to conceal his fire. Most battles on Fords, you sit here and try to do this, it's not going to work out well because the enemy up here is going to just blow you away. He's telling them, hey, up north, we outnumber them, go attack them. Unfortunately, they are taking a lot of losses to the north. And the very southern flank at the southern end of this mountain got blown away, so now there's a huge force of enemy tanks that are free in the south. He's pulling back. He knows 
most likely he's going to have to go defend Cap. He's asking for help for Cap. It looks like one of the uh, M46s to the north is dropping down to the south. And it also appears that that big force of heavies and a couple mediums turned around and instead of pressing on Cap, moved back into the middle. And so that's going to give him a chance to come in and play. Oops, here comes a uh, T-37 who dies right away. And now he's going to get to shoot to the back of this guy. So he's, he moved over this way, probably thinking he's going to have to really work hard to defend Cap. And ends up getting to fire into the back of a tiger who's not even paying attention to him. <laughs> Good turn of events for him. And here comes the low who realized that Dark Ninja is back over here coming looking for him. No idea he's about to get pounced on. And now he makes a huge mistake. He pulls out and gives Dark Ninja the ring to go behind him. Bad, bad, bad play. He dies. Dark Ninja just crossed over his gun and shot him. What he should have done there is turned his tank and put himself right up against that other tank so Dark Ninja couldn't get by. That would have at least given him a chance to shoot him. Instead of giving him a gap to let him go by. If you don't want to get circled when you're in a slow traversing tank, then put yourself in a position where the, the fast tank can't go in a full circle around you. That way at some point they have to cross over your gun and if you're quick enough you get the shot off. RHM is going down. So now it's four on three. I think he's headed out to see if he can find the GW Panther. Looking downfield, so he's going to get a couple shots on. The Panther manages to get out of direct line of fire, so he's going to have to go to run him. And as he starts to pull over, it's like, eh. Because of having to crest that little ridge, the GW Panther is going to have time to shoot me before I can bring my gun down low enough to shoot him. So I'm just going to back out of here. And probably go around to the side. See if I can snapshot him before he can rotate. So here he goes. He knows kind of where the party is already. Ooh, misses the first shot. GW Panther misses his chance, and then Dark Ninja finishes him off. His, his plan to move to the side there actually worked really well. He ended up giving up a shot, but it was only because he missed. He got the first shot because he already wasn't looking at him. He just went. T-37 
143 runs back down in the little pond there. Dark Names, it takes a look this way, doesn't like the setup. Again, it's another case of having to go up over that little, uh, little ridge before you can bring your gun to bear and that gives the enemy time to turn his turret toward you before you can fire. So this is what he wants, so he's going to go around. He's saying, hold him here and I'm going to go around and try to flank him. Trying to set the T-34 up to where he has to defend from two different directions. So almost a certain kill once you get a tank in a position like that, but T-34 has moved on out of the trap and picks off the FB-202, FB-4202, so now it's one on one. And the medium has about twice as many hit points as he does. He has the faster firing gun. A mobility advantage and a view range advantage. But... Unless you just get in the perfect position, the advantages he, have, he has may be hard to exploit. Unless the... <laughs> Let's see if this guy stays on cap. If he stays on cap, he's a fool. Because if he stays on cap, he's giving a lot of advantages back to uh, Dark Ninja. Now, he may be thinking, well, he really doesn't have an angle where he can come at me and exploit his view range. But Dark Ninja's saying, oh, let's see about that. Let me move way over here, and I bet I can see you before you see me. If I can get a couple shots on you, I've evened up the odds a lot, hit point wise. Now he does something important, he turns around so if he, he can shoot and scoot because he's pointed the right direction to do it. The other guy is looking the wrong way, he rotates his gun right away. Dark Ninja gets an extra shot at him, but because he rotated around, he was able to egress without taking damage back. And now the guy is tracked, he's shooting at the rear quarter panel of his tank. Sometimes hitting him. What was a hit point disadvantage is now in his favor. And the guy's staying on cap. How to lose a fight at the end of the battle. <laughs> Just watch what the enemy medium's doing and you're learning. Don't go on cap. If you want to go on cap for a few seconds and try to bait somebody to you, that's one thing. But even so, you're still giving the enemy the general location that you're at. So unless you're confident you can outspot them, not the biggest thing to do. Not the brightest thing to do. When you don't have a view range advantage, and it's not just like completely open terrain all around you to where you know you're going to be able to see somebody coming at you. This is just, you're begging to lose right now. He knows what's bu what bush he's in. Now that medium's pulling forward, he's going to pull out. Can't see him, but he knows where he was. He's going to blind shot that area. Gets the kill. Without even seeing what he was shooting at. Because he knew the direction the guy was moving. So he just shot down that line. And the bullet has to hit him at some point, and it did, and took him out. For the battle, 3,389 points of damage and 5 kills. 39 of 55 shooting, 71%. He lost 88,657 credits. Like we said, with the exception of 2 HRE he rounds, he only carries the premium ammo. So pretty much every fight, he's going to lose am he's going to lose money on it, unless he gets a lot of spotting damage. In this case, he got zero spotting damage and only two spots. 100 points of cap defense, and he survived the fight, got awarded 2,619 XP, also got an Orlix and the Defender, Bruiser, Fighter, Fire for Effect Mini Medals, and that gives him a second place battle score of 2,689. Fight went a little bit different than normal because 
not a bunch of heavies to play down south at the same time a lot of mediums to play up north the mediums on his team came up and instead of going to the north they pulled over this way and cleared out this pass of enemy tanks which was perfect for him he had come over here and was shooting at an easy eight and then down into the, the pond but as the enemy mediums started to show up because there was a lack of enemy tanks right here he was able just to pull back and sit in the open line up with trees further up to the north to provide concealment for his shots and just snipe these guys up here and they had were gaining an advantage when um, the very southern flank got lost and a whole bunch of tanks started pushing toward Cap. He thought they were going to go to Cap, so he pulled around to try to defend. They all got distracted by a medium back here, and that enabled him to come out, get a quick snapshot in the T-37 to kill it. And then there was a Tiger Porsche right in front of him, looking the wrong way, firing the wrong way, and not caring that there was a T-21 behind him shooting him. He was able to do a bunch of damage on him. And in the meantime, things started not going well up north. And he ends up coming all the way over here, shoots the RMH, goes over, started going in, needed one more shot on the RD, realized, hey, that guy's going to be able to shoot me before I can crest the little ridge in, in between us. So I just pull back and go around and get a shot from the side, which it worked out, even though we had a pair of missed shots on both sides. And then uh, he gets the kill comes back over same thing here he wants to sh pull over the little ridge and shoot down but realize he's not going to be able to do it without giving up a shot first so he just moves around and tries to flank but the medium backed off managed to kill his ally and it put it into a one-on-one -on -one. and at that point the medium tank did the exact worst thing he could possibly do other than just sit out in the open and that was go cap because it removes any guessing game out of Dark Ninja's mind. He knows where the guy is. He decides, well, if I pull way over here, hopefully I'm going to be able to see the guy and get a couple rounds off before he can defend himself. And that's going to narrow up the hit point gap. And it worked out perfectly. Guy continued to cap. Still didn't get the message. And so Dark Ninja pulled down here. He was sitting in a bush thinking he's going to be hidden. But no, that's not going to work out well. It wasn't a big enough bush. And um, the very last shot, he knew that the guy was pulling forward, so he just fired down that line of fire to where he couldn't do anything but hit him, and he got the kill. Good map awareness, good realizing that, unlike most battles, we're sitting out in the open here as a sure ticket to death. In this case, that wasn't going to happen because there was an enemy in the spot where they needed to be to defend against him. And at the end guys on cap so where can I go to utilize and exploit my view range advantage and let me get the first couple shots to get it down into a more manageable um, hit point differential and in, in this case it ended up being a hit point advantage that then he was able to turn into a victory be aware of what's going on be aware of what it means to you he did it over and over throughout the fight, both on a synoptic scale where he's looking at the whole map and realizes what's happening, and on a micro scale where he realizes, hey, if I pull over this ridge to get that last shot, I'm giving up a kill shot to the Arties, and I don't want to do that. And again over here, if I pull over this ridge to shoot down at this guy, I'm giving that guy a chance to kill me before I get to fire. He's aware of things overall, big picture and little picture. And because of that, he's in the Hall of Fame a lot. From Fords with Dark Ninja, happy hunting.